This video was supported by the Australian Government through its Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Initiative and the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife. Talbot Foundation Vet for the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital and today I have Nurse Haley assisting me with this presentation. We're going to be talking about how you can assess birds in your practice. We have a tawny frog mouth and the first step of your workup is handling the bird. To get the bird out of the carrier the easiest way to do this is using a towel. Depending on the size of the bird and the type of bird it is you may require thick gloves to help you but for our tawny frog mouth a towel will do. Haley is going to place the towel over the top of the bird, positioning the head away from her hands. The towel is going to cup over the body of the bird. Then she's going to pick up the bird with both hands. By using a towel, this allows us to decrease the amount of pressure we need to hold the animal so that it can still breathe. Because remember, birds do not have a diaphragm. They use their intercostal muscles to breathe and we don't want to restrict any breathing on these animals that may already be compromised. Once you have your bird secured by your assistant, you want to do your physical examination. As you can see, our tawny already has its mouth open, so we can assess the oral cavity. Using a paddle pop stick or some forceps is a nice safe way to examine the animal without your hands being close to the mouth. So we want to assess for any dirt or any blood that might be in there, especially the opening to the trachea. Often with birds such as magpies and currawongs, they can suffer from throat worm, and often this can occlude this opening, so it's important that you check to make sure this area is clean and clear of any debris, especially if you're going to anaesthetize them. A lot of the times these animals will come in and they'll have a lot of dirt in their mouth or they may have blood in their mouth depending on the source of trauma. So this tawny frog mouth has a lot of dirt in its mouth. That suggests it's been on the ground for a fair amount of time. With all your assessments, start from the top and work your way down. A lot of birds do suffer ocular trauma as a result of being hit by a car or flying into a window. So it is important to do a thorough ocular exam as part of your workup. So with your ophthalmoscope, it's important to have a look at the pupil to make sure it is constricting, but also to have a look at the back of the eye and check the pectin and just make sure that both eyes actually constrict. Remember birds have an avascular retina and they'll have a pectin, which is a black pigmented area at the back of the eye. Continuing on with your physical exam, we want to check the wings and the body to ensure there are no injuries or if there are injuries, we can note where they are. With your assistant holding the bird, remove one wing at a time. That's going to be the easiest and safest way to look at the bird. So now that we have one wing exposed, we can extend the wing, have a look at the feathers, feel the bones. Sometimes you can feel the fractures check the movement of the shoulder as luxations are common as a result of being hit by a car or flying into a window. Once you have done both sides, now you actually want to check the abdomen and the salomic cavity as well as the legs. You can part the feathers, find your keel and then assess the amount of muscle on each side. Assessing the salomic cavity is very important but can be hard in some species but you want to feel for any bulges, any masses or any areas that feel abnormal. Lastly, while we have the bird in this position, we can assess both legs. You want to ensure that there is tone, adequate tone in both legs, and that the animal will grip. Not all birds will voluntarily grip because they're too scared. So don't assume that they don't have grip when you hold them in this position. Maybe assess them on a perch in the cage. But we want to make sure that we're feeling for any fractures or any luxations or any wounds. You also do want to check for any signs of bumblefoot, which this tawny frog mouth does have, that can let you know that the bird has been on the ground for a substantial amount of time, which is abnormal. Ideally, to take blood and to do further examinations, you should anaesthetize your bird. This will decrease the stress on the bird, decrease the amount of time that you're holding the bird and increase your chances of getting a diagnosis. So now with this tawny frog mouth, we're going to anaesthetize it so that we can take some x-rays and take some blood. When you anaesthetize a bird, it is really important to pre-oxygenate for at least one to two minutes prior to turning on the anaesthetic. We have our mask here. We've placed some vet wrap around it to decrease the um, chances of gas escaping. And we're gonna just do our oxygen first up. Place the mask over the bird's mouth. Hold the bird upright. 
We want to ensure that if the bird does have a crop, that it is empty before anaesthetizing the animal. Alternatively, if you are unsure, ensure that you keep the head up so the chances of regurgitation are minimized. Our bird has now been pre-oxygenated for one to two minutes and we can now turn on the isoflurane to actually anaesthetize the bird. Start off with a crash induction of 5% and then once the bird is anaesthetized, you can take it down to the lowest possible number to keep the bird asleep. Be mindful that some birds may breath hold, especially those ones who are seabirds and do hold their breath for diving. Once your bird is anaesthetized, you can then place any monitoring equipment that you may want to use onto the bird. We have a small pulse ox that we're going to be placing on the toes, and this will help us monitor it as well as our normal monitoring of a stethoscope. Placing a tube into the bird's airway is a really good way to maintain your anesthesia. Non-cuffed ET tubes are always safe for birds, and so if you have these available, they're always great to use. I'm going to go ahead now and tube my bird. Your assistant is going to hold the bird's head up. We're going to open the mouth. The assistant can hold the top beak and you can hold the bottom beak and you can see the opening to the glottis. You wait for the bird to breathe and then you gently rotate the E2 tube in, not placing too much pressure on. Connect your breathing circuit back up so the bird can stay asleep and then we're going to tape the tube in. Now, if you do not have ET tubes or you're not comfortable, that's fine. You can still use a mask. Once your bird is tubed and you're comfortable, place the bird on its back. Pull the wings out. You want to make sure that it is level so that we get the body as straight as possible. So you can see our bird has tape on both wings. We've made sure they're nice and even. And then we've got tape on both feet and we have not included the tail. If you include the tail, this can actually twist the spine. Remember to put your marker down. And once you're happy, you can then take your x-ray. Once you've done your VD view, it's important to do your lateral view. To place your bird in lateral, place the bird on its side with the wings up behind it. Now, depending on if you think there is a fracture or not in the wings, you may want to have the wings right on top of each other, or you may want to have them slightly obliqued. The tape is going to go over the metacarpals, and then we're going to have one leg forward and one leg back. It's important that you always do both views We're now about to take some blood and give fluids and medications to our bird while we're under anaesthetic. There are several places where you can actually take blood from a bird. These are the jugular vein, the cutaneous wing vein or brachial vein, or the medial metatarsal vein, depending on the size of your bird. So today we're gonna to be taking blood from the jugular vein. The right side of the bird is always easier to take blood from because we have a featherless tract region. With one finger, hold off the vessel and with your other finger, extend the neck. Gently insert the needle. I find if I put the bevel down, there's less chance of creating a hematoma. Draw back. Once you've got the desired amount of blood, ensure that you hold off the vein to decrease the chances of a hematoma. Giving intramuscular injections to birds is quite easy. Find your keel and go either side of the keel and feel for the breast tissue. Prep your area, bevel up, into the muscle, draw back, then give your injection. You can also use this area for a subcutaneous injection. The easiest place to give your pre-warmed fluids is in the inguinal fold. So find your leg, pull it down, Feel for a floppy bit of tissue here. And this is a great area to give fluids to birds. You can also give this to them conscious. Make sure that your fluids are given subcutaneously because there is an air sac that sits in the salomic cavity. And if your fluids go in there, you can cause problems for your bird. Place the needle under the skin. I always like to make sure I can still see my needle so that I know that I'm in the subcutaneous space. If you're happy, Give your fluids. This area is quite mobile and you can put a fair amount of fluids into this region. Often I will spread my injection to both sides so that the bird is comfortable and that I haven't put too much pressure on each leg. And I've given my fluids. It is important to remember that when your bird is under anaesthetic, you do have some heat source to keep the bird warm. So we are using a heat lamp 
but something like a bear hugger or a heat mat is just as effective. Once you have completed your workup with your bird, you can turn your isofluorone off and wait for the bird to wake up. Some birds can wake up really quickly while others take some time. Now this bird, we're gonna keep it underneath the heat light while it wakes up and we're gonna keep its head elevated so that it doesn't regurgitate. Once it starts to open its eyes and move around, we will then extubate it, we'll hold it for a little bit longer and we may place a mask to provide flow by oxygen until the bird is fully awake. Once you're happy that your bird has recovered from its anesthetic, you can place it into a nice warm hospital cage. Ideally, if you can place it away from dogs and cats so that it's not so stressed, that'll be the best thing for the animal. Once your bird has woken up from anaesthetic and you're happy for it to go back into its recovery cage, an important part of your housing is to make this thing called a donut. This is just a rolled up towel, but it does help with the recovery of your bird post anaesthetic. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this into your cage, you're then gonna place the bird so that its head sits on the bottom of the U of the donut, and its wings are sitting on either side. This helps to keep the head elevated, but also to keep the, the wings off the side of the body to help with the breathing. And once we're happy, we can then close our lid and then put it into a normal cage. If possible, if you have some kind of external heating source that will keep the bird nice and warm because their body temperatures are a lot higher than our other animals, these guys do run at about 40 to 41 degrees Celsius. This will help with the recovery a lot. We are very grateful to the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife for producing this video. If you have any questions regarding treating our Australian native animals, please do not hesitate to contact the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital at www.byronbaywildlifehospital.org.